Hello friends, today we will discuss about the anatomy of middle ear. In today's class, we mainly discuss about the boundaries of middle ear. Now here you can see that middle ear is a box like structure. So we will discuss each and every wall of this box. So what is the middle ear? Now middle ear is a cavity which is filled with the air. Now this is the first question to understand that you have the auditory tube which is a connection between the middle ear cavity and the nasopharynx and this tube maintain the air pressure in the middle ear on both the sides of the tympanic membrane. So you have to understand that it is a cavity which is having the air not any kind of fluid. It is lined by the mucous membrane. It is present in the petrous part of the temporal bone that is again an important question for your exam. It lies between the tympanic membrane laterally and the lateral wall of the internal ear medially. Now in this diagram you can see that this is the middle ear cavity. Now this is the lateral wall of the middle ear which is formed by the tympanic membrane and this is the wall which is formed by the wall of your inner ear. It is connected internally to the tube and this tube is known as auditory tube that will open into the nasopharynx. The cavity of middle ear is also known as tympanic cavity or tympanum. Clear? Then when you will see the middle ear as a whole, it is an intermediate portion of the blind diverticulum from the respiratory mucous membrane of nasopharynx. Now when you will see the nasopharynx, from the nasopharynx a diverticulum will arise and that diverticulum is going to form the three parts. Now what are these three parts? From front to back this diverticulum is having auditory part or auditory tube, then tympanic cavity and posterior most part is known as mastoid antrum which contains the air cells. Now when you will see these three parts here, what you are able to understand that it looks like a pistol. Now when you will have the pistol, in the pistol you will have the nozzle, you will have the body of the pistol and you will have the handle of the pistol. Now this is the shape which resembles this diverticulum. So the outline of the diverticulum resembles the pistol. In this pistol, this nozzle is represented by the eustachian tube. The body is represented by the middle ear cavity and the handle is represented by the mastoid antrum. So you have to understand this concept that the, this nasopharyngeal diverticulum which is going to form the mucosal lining of your middle ear cavity is having not a single part, not only the middle ear but it also lines the eustachian tube as well as mastoid antrum. Now all these three things in a single word if we are using the word we are using the word is cleft so what is the meaning of middle ear cleft there are two things one is the middle ear cavity another is middle ear cleft now middle ear cleft includes all the three things eustachian tube aditus antrum and mastoid air cells with the middle ear cavity so this whole area is known as middle ear cleft and this middle ear cleft resembles the shape of pistol and the important thing is that we are having only the middle ear cavity which is a part of this middle ear cleft. Now what are the boundaries which we are going to discuss today? Now when you will see the middle ear it likened to a six sided box. How many box are there? There are six sided box. You can assume the room in which you are sitting. Now the room is having the six sides the roof, floor, anterior wall, posterior wall, you have the two sides uh, laterally, so you can consider one lateral wall, another is medial wall. So there are six sides, roof, floor, anterior, posterior wall, medial and lateral wall. Now, th now in this diagram, this is your anterior wall, this is the posterior wall, this is your roof, this will become the floor, the wall which you are able to see here, this is the medial wall, and you are able to see all these structures after removing the lateral wall of the middle ear that is your tympanic membrane. So we'll discuss the important features of each and every wall of middle ear. So here if you will see the orientation of the middle ear what you are able to understand that this is your pharyngotympanic tube or you can say 
the auditory tube. Now you have to understand that this is the anterior portion of the skull. So this will become the anterior wall. Now here you can see that this tube is connected to the middle ear through the anterior side or anterior wall. Now in the posterior side you can see that this is the mastoid antrum. So what you are able to understand that posteriorly this is the mastoid antrum which is connecting to the middle ear. So if I will see this orientation I can understand what first you have the anteriorly auditory tube you have the mastoid antrum on the posterior side of the middle ear then you have this inner ear now this inner ear is on the medial side because this is the midline of your skull so, clear and this will become your lateral wall and you know that it will continue with the external acoustic meatus here so when you will see the different wall of your middle ear in this skull you can uh, imagine this is the anterior wall where you will have the connection you will have the posterior wall where you will have the mastoid antrum this is your medial wall because it is the midline and deep to the mid medial wall you will have the inner ear this is your lateral wall which is formed by the tympanic membrane in here you will have the external acoustic meatus then this bone which is here become the roof and the bone which is in the lower part become the floor of this middle ear position clear now what is about the roof so first we'll discuss the roof now the roof is also known as tagmental wall what is the term we are using tagmental wall what is tagmental wall tagmental wall is nothing but the name given to the roof why because the roof is having a thin bony plate that is known as tagment tympani. Now in this diagram you can see that this is the roof of your middle ear and this roof is separating the cavity to the middle cranial fossa. So it separates the middle ear from the middle cranial fossa and you know that middle cranial fossa contains the temporal lobe. Now this tagment tympani is a part of the petrous part of the temporal bone. It forms the canal for tensor tympani also. Now here you will see later on that in anterior wall we have a special small foramina and through this foramina or the canal the tensor tympani muscle is going to enter inside the middle ear. Now the wall the superior wall of this canal is also formed by this roof of middle ear cavity. So this tagment tympani or the roof is not only forming this major portion but it also contributing in the formation of this superior part of the canal for tagment tensor tympani muscle and it also extends posteriorly where it forms the roof of the opening which is present in the posterior wall is known as aditus. So you will see that the roof or tagment tympani is having a small contribution anteriorly through to for the formation of the roof of the canal for tensor tympani muscle and posteriorly it is making a roof of this opening in the posterior wall that is known as editus clear now in this diagram if you will see the roof now this is the roof now this roof is known as tagment tympani now below this tagment tympani you are having the middle ear cavity and above that you have middle cranial fossa. So in the middle cranial fossa the floor will show the feature and that is tagment tympani. So here you can see the floor of your cranial cavity. Now this is your middle cranial fossa. Now in this middle cranial fossa on both the sides you will have this plate of the bone and this bony plate is known as tagment tympani. If you will puncture or if you will break this part of the bone, you will open the roof of your middle ear cavity. So this will become question of your exam. Sometimes you have the marking in this place and you have the question, what is this part of the bone is known as? So this is the tagment tympani, which is forming the roof of middle ear cavity. Now we'll move to the floor. The floor is known as jugular wall. Now why jugular wall? 
बिकॉज देयर इज ए वेन इज नोन एज इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन नाउ दिस इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन विल शो ए डायलिटेशन नियर इट्स स्टार्टिंग ए पॉइंट और द नियर द बिगिनिंग एंड दैट डायलिटेशन इज नोन एज बल्ब ऑफ इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन सो द फ्लोर ऑफ मिडिल क्रेनियल फोसा इज हैविंग ए वेरी थिन लेयर ऑफ द बोन एंड दैट बोन इज एक्चुअली सेपरेटिंग द बल्ब ऑफ इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन फ्रॉम मिडिल क्रेनियल मिडिल ईयर कैविटी दैट्स वाई इट इज नोन एज jugular wall now in this diagram if you will see that this is the floor now in this floor here is the jugular fossa now in this jugular fossa you will have the internal jugular vein which is having the bulb so that bulb is separated here by this portion of the bony plate now this bony plate is very thin now the important thing here to understand that sometimes it is congenitally deficient and the jugular bulb may then project into the middle ear separated from the cavity only by the mucosa clear so if this black color area or the bony part is absent then only this mucosal lining of your middle ear is the partition between the jugular bulb and middle ear cavity at the anterior end of the floor is the internal opening of tympanic canaliculus now this is again the question of your exam what is tympanic canaliculus and where you will find the tympanic canaliculus in the middle ear answer is that tympanic canaliculus is a feature of the floor now when you will see the floor in the floor there is a, a small opening is present now this opening is here now this opening is allowing entry of in nerve and this nerve is known as tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve this tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve it pierces the floor it enters and make a plexus on the promontory and this plexus is known as tympanic plexus so you have to understand that what are the two important features of the floor one is it is related with the bulb of your internal jugular vein and second there is a, a small aperture for the entry of tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal now and that is known as tympanic canaliculus now in these two diagram if you will see that where is the internal jugular vein so here you can see this is the internal jugular vein now this internal jugular vein is having the relation with the floor of middle ear now this floor of middle ear is that's why known as jugular wall and sometimes if this bone is absent then only the mucosa is a partition between the vein and middle ear cavity now we'll move to the lateral wall now you have to understand that the lateral wall of the middle ear cavity is formed by tympanic membrane so the tympanic membrane is forming the medial end of external acoustic meatus but it also forming the lateral wall of your middle ear cavity but if you will see the whole length the whole length is not formed by purely with the tympanic membrane here you can see that this upper portion is not having the membrane this part is having the bone now this area which is having the bone is known as scutum so what is scutum scutum is nothing but it is the upper part of the this lateral wall which is above the your tympanic membrane now you know that this middle ear cavity is having the upper part of the cavity which is above the level of tympanic membrane and this part is known as epitympanic recess this is known as epitympanic recess so this epitympanic recess which is a upper part of your middle ear cavity anteriorly not lined by tympanic membrane but it is lined by the bone and this part of the bone is known as scutum so the lateral wall of the middle ear almost and entirely formed by the tympanic membrane the cauda tympanic nerve which is a branch of facial nerve is related with the inner side of tympanic membrane particularly the pars flaccida now to see the detail of the tympanic membrane you can watch my video which we have already done on the tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane does not extend superiorly into the epitympanic recess so epitympanic recess is this part where you can see that upper area 
is not having any relation with the tympanic membrane. So you will have a bony wall and this bony wall is known as scutum. Now we will move to the posterior wall. Now posterior wall is having some important features. The posterior wall separates the tymp tympanic cavity from mastoid antrum and mastoid air cells. Now you have to understand that posterior wall is broader above and it is narrow down. So when you will have the broader upper part of the posterior wall, there is a very large gap is present and that gap is known as aditus. So the first feature on the posterior wall is the aditus. Now here you can see that this is the section. Now in this section you can see this is the anterior wall. So this is the anterior aspect. Then you will have the mastoid process on the posterior side. So this is the mastoid process on the posterior side. Then you will have the roof and the floor. Now in this section what you are able to appreciate that this is the medial wall. So when you will see through my right ear after removing the tympanic membrane you can see inside my right ear. So this is the section of my right side and here you will have the sagittal section of the skull. Now in this sagittal section of my right side of the ear you can appreciate that the posterior wall is here. Now this area is here showing the posterior wall. So the posterior wall is behind the middle ear cavity and it is related mainly with this mastoid process. Now there is a communication. Now this communication which is broad area and this broad area is known as editus. Now apart from the editus you will have the fossa incudius. You will have a projection is known as pyramid. You will have the vertical part of the facial canal. You have the posterior canaliculus for corda tympani. Now, the lower part of this wall consists of the bony partition between the tympanic cavity and mastoid air cells. So here you can see in this diagram that upper part is having a broad opening but in the lower part you will have this bony partition between the middle ear and these air spaces of mastoid process. Now in this diagram you can again appreciate the two very important thing is that when you are talking about the posterior wall in this schematic diagram you have a opening above now this opening is known as editus this opening is here that is the editus then you will have the part of the facial canal now this is the part of the facial canal which is vertically placed here you will have the part of the facial canal which is vertically placed you will have a projection is known as pyramid now here you can have the projection is known as pyramid so these are the some important thing which you have to understand now here you will have this now which is known as corda tympanic now and it will enter through this gap is known as posterior canaliculus now here you can see this is the corda tympanic now branch of the facial will enter through this gap so on the posterior wall you will have in this schematic diagram the few important features are visible here. Now we will discuss these features one by one. First is editus. Now what is editus? Editus is nothing but it is a name of an opening. Now this opening is present in the upper part of the posterior wall. Now here if you will see this diagram, in this diagram the editus is present here. Now this is the editus. Now through this editus this middle ear cavity is communicating with the posteriorly placed mastoid antrum. So through this the epitympanic recess opens into the mastoid antrum. Now this part, this part which is above the level of your tympanic membrane is known as epitympanic recess. So this recess is communicating posteriorly through this opening and this opening is known as editus. The mastoid antrum is a cavity with collection of the air filled spaces. So what is mastoid antrum? Now mastoid antrum is nothing but it is a again a space where you have multiple air filled small pockets and these are known as mastoid cells including the mastoid process. The mastoid antrum is separated from the middle cranial fossa by a thin plate is known as tagment tympani. So this is again the tagment tympani which is forming the roof of middle ear cavity also separating this mastoid antrum from the middle cranial fossa. The mucous membrane lining the mastoid air cells continue with the middle ear and that's why the infection of the middle ear can easily go inside the mastoid air cells. 
So you have to understand that the, whenever the infection or pus collection is there, it can go inside the moistoid air cells which are present in posterior relation. Now when you will see the posterior wall, what are the other features? We talked about the pyramid. Now what is pyramid? Now it is nothing but it is a small bony elevation. Now this elevation is a hollow cone which lies below the editus. So there is an important landmark that it is a feature of the posterior wall below the editus. So where is the editus? Now this is the editus. Now below the editus you will have a bony projection. Now this bony projection is known as your pyramid. Now this pyramid allow the tendon of this muscle which is known as stapedius. What is the name of muscle? Stapedius. So this muscle will come out through this bony projection and this muscle ultimately will go to the stapes muscle will come out and it ultimately will go to the handle of stapes bone. So you have to understand that what is pyramid? Pyramid is nothing but it is a site for the origin of a muscle and that muscle is known as stapedius muscle and this stapedius muscle will go to the stapes bone and this pyramid lies below the opening that is editus. So you can see this is the editus and this opening is here and the pyramid is just below the opening. Clear? Now in this diagram again you can see this is your opening and below the opening you will have this hollow conical projection which is known as pyramid. Now you have some more feature on the posterior wall like vertical part of the facial canal. Now when you will see the facial now it enters into the uh, cavity or it leaves the cranium, posterior cranial fossa through the internal acoustic meatus. Now once it passes through the internal acoustic meatus it has the horizontal and vertical part and these are the bony canals and that is known as fallopian canal. Now this fallopian canal is having the horizontal part as well as the vertical part. Now this vertical part is related with the posterior wall of your middle ear cavity. So the ridge for the canal for facial nerve runs just behind the pyramid and it descends up to the stylomastoid foramina. So you know that there is a stylomastoid foramina through which the facial nerve finally come out from the skull. So you have to understand that posterior wall is related with vertical or the uh, vertical part of this uh, uh, facial nerve canal and this part will give rise to the nerve that is known as corda tympani nerve. Now this corda tympani nerve when it arises from the posterior side it enters into the middle ear. Now when it enters into the middle ear it make a small uh, aperture here and that opening is known as posterior canaliculus. So what is posterior canaliculus? Posterior canaliculus is an opening in the posterior wall of the middle ear through which the corda tympanic nerve enters into the middle ear and you know that after entering it this nerve runs on the inner side of tympanic membrane. Then in this diagram you can see that this is the entry point of the corda tympani now and here you can see that it is running on the inner side of the tympanic membrane and ultimately it will leave this middle ear cavity through the anterior canaliculus and it come out through the petrotympanic fissure. Now you have one more important feature in the posterior wall is known as fossa incudis. Now what is fossa incudis? Fossa incudis is nothing but it is a shallow a small depression in the lower end of the posterior part of the epitympanic rhesus. Now again the important thing is that it is related with the epitympanic part of the middle ear cavity. Now in this diagram if you will see that this is your tympanic membrane. Now this is the posterior wall. Now we are reading the posterior wall but the epitympanic part comes above the level of tympanic membrane. So this is the upper part of your uh, this posterior wall where you will have the opening is known as editus. Now through this editus the epitympanic part communicating through this mastoid antrum. And this fossa incudius is a feature of epitympanic posterior wall. It is not here 
because this part is not epitympanic it is mesotympanic now this epitympanic part posteriorly is having a, a small depression now this depression is known as fossa incudius now in this depression you have the short process of the incus so this is the short process of the incus and there is a connection between this bony depression and the process that is a ligament so you have to understand this is again a very important question in your mul multiple choice that fossa incudius which is a feature of the posterior wall is present in upper part or lower part so you have to understand that it is a feature of upper part or basically it is a feature of posterior part of epitympanum not the mesotympanum now we'll move to the anterior wall now when you will see the anterior wall now see this is your right side of the ear now when you will cut in the this sagittal section this is your posterior wall so you will have the mastoid process posteriorly now automatically you will have the anterior wall here now in this anterior wall here you can see this is a bony plate now when you will have the bony plate now above the bony plate and below the bony plate you can see the two structure now what are these structure now above this bony plate there is a muscle now this muscle is arising from outside and it is approaching inside the middle ear cavity and there is a one more channel is here below so in the anterior wall of your middle ear cavity you will find two channel one channel is for tensor tympani muscle which is upper channel and lower larger channel is for auditory tube so when you are writing the anterior wall these are the two very important features which you cannot miss so the anterior wall of the middle ear is partially complete why partially complete because only this portion is complete the major upper part is having two large openings now these openings are lower larger opening so this lower larger opening is for auditory tube and the upper smaller opening and this upper smaller opening is for the tendon tendon of tensor tympani muscle the bony partition between the two canal which extends backward now we have just seen that this black color partition is here now this black color partition is extending into the posterior part of the middle ear now this black color partition as soon as we'll reach here is termed as a hook like structure and this is known as processus cochlearyformis what is that processus cochlearyformis so you have to understand that what is processus cochlearyformis it is nothing but it is a bony partition between these two canal and when it approaches on the middle ear it become a hook like structure and this is known as processus cochlearyformis now this processus cochlearyformis further moves on the medial wall so it is going posteriorly and make a hook on the medial wall so when you are talking about the processus cochlearyformis on the medial wall this hook lies just anterior to the oval window so here you can see that this is your oval window now on the anterior aspect of the oval window you will have this hook like projection which is known as processus cochlearyformis now what is the use of processus cochlearyformis now you have to understand that this tendon is coming from the anterior direction and if we want to change its direction to go towards the lateral side where you have the tympanic membrane so this tensor tympani muscle is creating the tension into the tympanic membrane and tympanic membrane is not posteriorly so this tendon will go straight actually the tympanic membrane is on the lateral side so this tendon has to take the change in the direction so to change the direction it need a support or a pulley like a structure or a hook and that is provided by this projection or processus cochlearyi formis so the tendon of tensor tympani take a turn here to get attached on the neck of malleus and the cochlear processus cochlearyi formis also marks the level of the first genu of facial nerve which is a important landmark of the surgery of the facial nerve so when you will see here above that you can see there is a turn now the turn is known as genu and here you will have the geniculate ganglia 
So, processus formis is a very important landmark in the intraoperative surgeries for identification of this geniculate ganglia which is present on the first turn of your facial nerve. Then the lower part of anterior wall if you will see there are few important features. Now when you will see this anterior wall we have already discussed there are two openings one opening is for the tensor tympani then lower larger opening is for the auditory tube. Now this lower part which is having the bony plate is pierced or perforated by the three structure. One is the tympanic branch of internal carotid artery. Now here you can see that this is the internal carotid artery and the artery is giving a branch that will enter inside. Second thing is the plexus is present, present around the internal carotid. You can see this yellow color plexus that is the sympathetic plexus. From the sympathetic plexus the nerves are arising and that will enter inside and that ultimately take part, participation in the tympanic plexus. Then third is anterior canaliculus. Now this anterior canaliculus is the exit of corda tympani. You have seen that there is a posterior entry of the corda tympani. The entry is on the posterior wall and this is the exit and exit is on the anterior wall. And in this part the nerve is present on inner side of lateral wall that is tympanic membrane. So whenever you are writing about the corda tympanic now, corda tympanic entry is through the posterior wall and exit through the anterior wall and the exit through anterior wall is known as anterior canaliculus and entry through the posterior wall is known as posterior canaliculus. Clear? Then we will move to the medial wall. Now medial wall is the most important separate question for your exam. Now when you will see the medial wall, the medial wall separates the tympanic cavity from the inner ear. It is formed by the bony lateral wall of the internal ear. So the lateral wall of internal ear forming the medial wall of the middle ear and it is purely and purely bony in nature. Now this bony wall is having some important characteristic feature. First, promontory, second oval window or fenestra vestibuli, third is the round window or fenestra cochlea, then sinus tympani, then prominence of the oblique part of the facial canal and prominence of the lateral semicircular canal which is a part of inner ear. Now this is the schematic diagram where you can see the medial wall. So this is the medial wall. Now this medial wall is visible after removing the lateral wall that is tympanic membrane. Now in this wall you can see this is your upper window, that is your oval window, this is round window, this is your promontory, this is your facial canal, this is your prominence formed by the semicircular canal. So we will see these features one by one. First is the promontory. So what is promontory? Now this is very commonly asked fill in the blank question in your exam. So promontory is a round prominence in the center of the medial wall of middle ear and it is mainly produced by the first turn or the basal turn of the cochlea which is a underlying structure of your inner ear. So when you will see the inner ear, inner ear is having the cochlea which produces a prominence or a bulging and that is known as promontory. So, this promontory is produced because of underlying bone and that is known as cochlea. The tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve comes from the floor and it ultimately ramify on this promontory to form the tympanic plexus. Now this plexus also have the contribution from the branches of internal carotid plexus and we have seen that these branches are entering through the anterior wall. Ultimately, the plexus supply the mucosa of middle ear, bestoid area and pharyngotympanic tube. Now from this tympanic plexus, you will have the origin of lesser petrosal nerve. Now this lesser petrosal nerve leaves the promontory and it enters into the middle cranial fossa. From the middle cranial fossa, you know that it comes out from the foramen oval and ultimately it terminates into the aortic ganglia. So the next is oval window. Now oval window is a reniform aperture and it is located above and behind. Now see if you will divide this 
middle medial wall into the quadrant now this quadrant is the upper and posterior quadrant now in this upper and posterior quadrant here is the location of the oval window so this oval window is postero superior in relation to the promontory so you have to understand that it is postero superior to the promontory and it is closed by the foot plate of the stepes and annular ligament now through this window what will happen that the vibration which are initiated by the tympanic membrane transmit to the cochlea of inner ear now the next window is the round window the round window is located again in posterior to the promontory but in the inferior part so here is the round window so you have to understand the location of both oval and round window oval window is also posterior but in the superior aspect and round window is also posterior but inferior aspect in relation to the promontory so it is postero inferior and it is closed by a secondary tympanic membrane the secondary tympanic membrane separates the middle ear for, from the scala tympani which is a part of inner ear now in this diagram if you will see this is your two windows this is your oval window and this is the round window and this part is known as scala tympani now here you can see that whatever the vibrations are produced here they will transmit through the malleus incus and stepes and ultimately stepes will vibrate here this is your oval window clear so you have to keep this thing in mind that in relation to the promontory you have the posterior placement of these two window but one is on the postero superior aspect and one is on the postero inferior aspect now in this diagram also this is a very classical schematic diagram so here you can see the oval window is present in the postero superior and round window is present postero inferior aspect of your medial wall now what is sinus tympani this is again an important feature of your medial wall now this sinus tympani is a depression or a deep recess and deep recess present behind the promontory between these two windows now when you will have the sinus tympani it indicates the position of the ampulla of posterior semicircular canal now here you can see that this is one window this is another window now in these between the two window here we have the position of the sinus tympani now this sinus tympani bounded by the subiculum below and ponticulus above these are the important landmark in during the ent surgery and it lies medial to the pyramid so when you will have the pyramid now this is the pyramid just medial to pyramid there is a, a small deep recess is present and this deep recess is known as sinus tympani then on the medial wall we have seen that there is a part of the facial canal and this part can be considered as a horizontal or oblique part of the facial canal now this posterior and superior to the oval window now this is again the question of your exam that what is the relation of the oval window and the facial canal now here in this diagram you can see that this is your oval window now above the oval window you can see this yellow color area and this yellow color area is nothing but it is a facial now inside the bony canal so when you will see this part now this part is known as oblique canal which is present on the medial wall and it ultimately continue with this vertical portion of the facial canal which is present in the posterior wall so the posterior and superior to the oval window on the medial wall there is a prominence of the facial canal it is a ridge of the bone and that ridge is produced by the facial nerve which is present in the canal and it passes through the temporal bone now it extends backward and downwards above the oval window so this is again the important point which you have to always keep in mind that whenever we are talking about the relation of facial nerve with the oval window it is always above now ultimately it joins the vertical part and sometimes the bony covering of the facial nerve may be absent thus it exposing the nerve for vernal vernal ever for the injuries and infection 
So what will happen if this bony part is absent, then what will happen? This injury of the facial nerve become high. Why? Because the nerve is directly exposed to the uh, middle ear. Then you have prominence of the lateral semicircular canal. Now, the prominence of lateral semicircular canal are present above the facial canal. Clear? So, sometimes you have this image based question. So, this is the prominence of semicircular canal. This is the prominence of facial canal. So, facial canal is just above the oval window and above the facial canal you will have the prominence formed by the lateral semicircular canals. So just above and posterior to the prominence of facial canal, you have a ridge and this broad ridge is or the prominence produced by the lateral semicircular canal which is again a feature of inner ear. It is seen as a small ridge high up into the angle between the medial and posterior wall. So here you can see this is the posterior wall, this is the medial wall and here you are able to understand that these are the ridge like projections. So when you are reading the middle ear, you always keep this image in your mind. So what we are able to understand here that this is the roof which is known as tagment tympani. This is the floor which is known as jugular wall and below that you will have the internal jugular vein and its bulb. Then you have the anterior wall. In anterior wall there are two openings. One upper opening is for the tensor tympani, lower opening for auditory tube. Apart from that you have anterior canaliculus for the your corda tympanic nerve and you have a small foramina for entry of the sympathetic branches from the plexus around internal carotid artery. In the posterior wall, you have a large opening in upper part is known as editus. Then you will have vertical, vertical part of your facial canal. You have the posterior canaliculus for entry of your corda tympani now. And you have the pyramid which allow the entry of stapedius muscle inside the in a middle ear cavity. Then you have this classical picture of your medial wall. On medial wall, you have a big prominence is known as the promontory. On the promontory, you have a network of the nerves which is known as tympanic plexus. For the tympanic plexus, from the floor, you have entry of tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve. From this tympanic plexus, the lesser petrosal nerve will leave. Then on the medial wall, above and behind the promontory, you have oval window. Then behind but below, the promontory you have round window above the oval window you will have oblique part of the facial canal and above the facial canal you will have the prominence produced by lateral semicircular canals clear so at the end of this class of the middle ear you should have the idea what are the different characteristic feature of each and every wall because these all are the multiple choice as well as one line question for your exam. So this is all for the class. Thank you.